All right, good morning. Morning, all right, still. Yeah, uh, we'll be going to your lecture four today, and we will start off with your topic two, and we will finish off the topic two today. All right. Uh, there is a lot of calculation that you will learn in your lab and in your tutorial. I will be going through very briefly on the introduction only. All right. Uh, but of course, if you come across any question, then you can ask lah, along the way. Okay. Like I promised, we will be going into your two point uh, topic two all the way, not to bone haber. I think bone haber only in your tutorial. Okay. So we'll go all the way until you have law, the basic of it. Uh, we have eight type of enthalpy as I promised, but you know, Good. We'll be going uh, through that and also we'll be going through on how to write the equation of that. Okay? So, starting off the first and foremost, you are starting off with your standard enthalpy of formation. And from the word standard, like we learned last week, from the word standard, we know that we have the naught. And because of the word standard, you know that the condition that we are having is 298 Kelvin and 1 atm. What is actually formation? Is the change, is the heat change when one mole of compound is formed from its element. Keyword, one mole of compound formed from its element. Bermakna satu mole mesti jatuh pada compound tersebut. Okay? And what is actually element? Remember kotak-kotak dalam product table? Kalau benda tu duduk dalam kotak product table, benda tu element. Okay, so for example, in your H2O, you have your hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. That is your element. All right. This is your elements. This is your compound. So one more jato by the compound. So in your C2, H2, OH. Okay. In there, what compound do I have? I have carbon. I have hydrogen. I have oxygen. Nampak? So you need to balance your chemical equation based on one more of the compound. Carbon saya kena ada dua, hydrogen is a 3 over t, 3 over 2, oxygen is a half. We go for another one that is quite basic and simple. What happens if I'm having sulfuric acid? Alright. What happens if I'm having sulfuric acid? What element will made up this sulfuric acid? Hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen. So the one that will made it up is your hydrogen in the form of gas. Hydrogen is always a gas. Sulfur, a solid. Oxygen, a gas. And balance the equation. So satu mole kena duduk kat dia. So balance everything. Same thing goes to yang paling simple yang kamu selalu jumpa dan kamu suka buat silap. NaCl. Right? Who is the element? Sodium. Sodium, 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 when you are having NaCl, another question that you always do mistake is, bila dia adalah standard enthalpy of formation, dia mesti adalah Na solid, half Cl2 gas. Bukan NaCl plus, bukan Cl minus. Always remember, element is the pure element in the periodic table. Tidak ada perubahan. Dengan kata lain, dia takkan duduk dalam bentuk ion. Boleh? Alright. And cara yang paling senang nak detect element tu wujud atau tak wujud adalah check periodic table kamu dia kena duduk ada dalam setiap kotak tu. That is your element. Okay? Simple. Next. Standard enthalpy of formation untuk elements adalah zero. Kenapa standard enthalpy of the element adalah zero? Ada. Maksud saya tadi kita ada Na betul? Alright, Na kan dengan kuat dan jelas. We know that Na is an element. We agree that Na is an element. And if I write the enthalpy of formation of the Na, dia akan sama dengan kosong. Why? Because they're pure. 
Sebab dia stabil lagi Banyak benda dalam dunia ni stabil Baju yang hang pakai tak stabil ke awak Pakai-pakai kain cair Banyak benda dalam dunia ni stabil But they are not element Why the standard and topic of formation of element is zero Kita perlu wujudkan dia tak Dia dah sedia Ada Alright, what is element in the product table? It exists uh, naturally. Okay, so we do not need to form it, right? We do not need to make it. Therefore, you don't need energy because it's already there, exists naturally in the product ta in the product table. Blah. On the earth, product table is just a table. It's not in there. Okay, boleh? So data H formation untuk semua benda yang duduk dalam product table sendiri. Satu kotak, dia mesti adalah kosong Sebab kita tak perlu produce Dia dah memang wujud semula jadi Okay Alright uh, Quick question lah Hydrogen gas uh, Tak apa Ah, Boleh, boleh okay. Tak apa, tak jadi, tak jadi Betul Tak jadi Combustion Alright Kalau tadi formation data H adalah data H We change Bermakna Akan ada benda yang kita perlu tenaga Akan ada benda yang kita bebaskan tenaga Depends on apa yang kita hasilkan, depends on the process of the reaction. It can be positive, it can be uh, negative. Benda bakar apa-apa? 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 Benda That's why in the entropy of formation, standard entropy of formation, it will be forever heat release. Dengan kata lain, untuk for combustion, formation pula. Untuk combustion, it will forever be negative because any type of combustion heat will definitely be released betul so heat release when one mole of substance is burned completely in excess of oxygen uh, in complete combustion complete combustion pernah dengar difference kalau complete dia hasilkan carbon dioxide kalau incomplete my product complete or incomplete <laughs> all right but in my in a complete in a delta h combustion in a standard and type of combustion we only discuss complete combustion dengan kata lain in your balance equation when you produce when you produce your product you must only produce carbon dioxide and next question dah selesai yang tu dah tahu heat release one more duduk kat siapa product or reactant one more of substance burn completely benda yang dibakar tu adalah kena pegang one more so benda yang dibakar carbon benda yang dibakar c2h6 betul semua orang kena balance based on dia make sense okay question so far no nope. all right if you look at it do you realize that physical place ada Alright, the person, bila kalau kamu study, kamu akan perasan especially bila kita masuk atomization and hydration and heat. Yang dia ubah hanya adalah physical phase, betul? A bit of tips for you over here before I forgot. Uh, kalau dia adalah gas, gas saya tak payah bagi tahu kot. Oksigen, do you know oksigen is a gas? Hydrogen is a gas, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen gas, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen monoxide. Kalau tak tahu, berhenti bernafas. Okay, I don't like it when you don't know. Okay? Next that I want to let you know or to remind you adalah logam. Semua group 1 and group 2 metal. Alright, adalah solid. Sodium, magnesium, calcium, uh, barium, semua group 1, group 2, group 13. Uh, group 13 yang kita belajar pun solid. Your aluminium, okay. Semua tu adalah solid. Group 1, group 2, group 13 metal adalah solid. And next yang saya nak ajar. Hydrocarbon. Kalau kamu ada C1 sampai C4, dia adalah gas. Sebab tu C2, H6. C2, H6 adalah gas. Kalau kamu ada C4, H8, dia tetap adalah gas. Faham? Next, kalau dia adalah C5, saya tak ingat dengan jujur. Saya tak ingat, saya tak ingat je. Nanti kita check balik. C5 kalau tak silap saya, C13 adalah liquid. Apa-apa above C14 and above adalah solid. Uh, solid. Okay. Solid kita jarang guna sampai level kita. 
kita akan guna sama ada gas atau liquid. So jangan cakap kamu kena teka. Faham? Hydrocarbon lah especially. And anything other than that, semua acid and base adalah aqueous. Semua acid base adalah aqueous. Okay, kita takkan ada acid base yang pure. So diorang mesti aqueous. Next, other than your acid base, hydrocarbon, methyl, then O, oh, ion. Semua kat ion and ion adalah aqueous. You should know that already. Okay, boleh? Ingat ya, benda yang senang sahaja. Next, neutralization. What is the condition for neutralization? Yang kita belajar sebelum ni. Acid base, betul? Apa beza standard entropy of neutralization? Of course, the condition that we are talking about. 398 Kelvin and 1 ATM. Tapi teacher rasa yang paling-paling ketara adalah your balance equation. Kalau standard entropy of neutralization keluar dalam exam, most of the time you will be doing the careless mistake on kamu balance ikut aku lah. Dah biasa buat kan? Alright, ikut akulah. Aku nak balance macam mana? Janji balance. No. In here, the one mole mesti jatuh pada water. In over here, one mole mesti jatuh pada water. Okay? And the easiest way to balance, balance dulu ikut cara kamu. For example, saya ambil uh, sulfuric acid yang kat bawah. Memang hmm. nak bagi sulfuric acid pun. For example, if I'm having the sulfuric acid as always, Alright, if I'm doing this, what I will do to balance it, kita akan buat cara yang standard. Kita takkan tengok pada air ikutlah, air nak berapa betul? Tu cara kita yang biasa. So, kalau saya balancekan cara biasa, I will do this. Okay, I'll do this. I will do this. Betul? Tu cara kita yang typical. Untuk nak jimat masa, daripada Han nak fikir balance pecahan, balance masa. Han nak Balance separuh tu susah. So balance macam biasa dan bahagi apa-apa dengan nombor yang kamu ada kat depan air. Kalau air adalah tiga, kamu dah balance macam biasa, air adalah tiga. Semua orang bahagi tiga. Sebab apa? Air kena satu. Kalau kamu dah balance semua benda, water you got two. So what do we do? Everybody divide by two. Nampak? That is the easiest way. Cuma saya nak ingatkan satu benda, in your standard entropy of neutralization, your one mole is sitting with water. Kind reminder, please remember. And I don't know whether you realize or not, if you don't and if you're lucky enough and oh, I'm not holding any of your cards. Uh, if I got time, I can show you. Uh, if you're doing neutralization with a strong acid and strong base, uh, slightly more concentrated than the one that you're using in the lab. Yang kamu guna dalam lab, dia tak rasa sangat. Tapi kalau siapa dah buat abali dua nanti, kamu akan rasa lah sayang, it's only five minutes past my class. Menguap tak? You want to come in front and sit with me? Open up your eyes girl. Your eyes is smaller than me. Nobody eyes should be smaller than me in the class. Okay? Kena pegang marker dulu sebelum tak apa-apa. Bagi lah. Oh, the acid that you're using in your lab is not concentrated enough uh, and your volume that you use is not high enough. Sebab tu kamu tak rasa yang dia akan membebaskan kamu. Tapi sebenarnya kalau kamu guna acid and base yang cukup pekat dan kamu pegang bika, bika luar tu kamu pegang dan saya tuang acid and base dalam bika tu, kamu akan rasa hamba boleh dibebaskan. Alright, and we will actually do this experiment in your experiment two using calorimeter kita. Kita akan tuang acid and base dan kamu akan measure the temperature. You will realize the temperature increase. Alright, and of course, we are not using a very concentrated acid. Uh, because you'll get burnt. Nanti kamu dah tak lawa. Dah memang tak lawa dah. Nanti lagi tak lawa, tak elok lah kan? Are you awake of it? That's why I always need to make these stupid jokes to make you awake. And you know it's stupid joke and yet we are making it. Alright, so it's always a heat relief. It's always a heat release. Neutralization adalah lebih kurang macam combustion sebenarnya. Dia mesti heat release. Tapi uh, one mole untuk combustion duduk kat reactant, one mole untuk neutralization duduk kat air. Tu je. Okay. Next. Ah. What is atomization? Question ah. On your left reactant and on your right product, which one is the one that's stable? Reactant or product? Reactant. 
sodium kita tengok sodium ah sodium solid itself pun dah tak berapa nak tabir betul alright kau kau kena simpan dalam minyak and then supaya dia tak react betul benda baik lah alright alright jadi saya akan potong atau letakkan besi betul kita main kita potong besar kita tak tak kita tak sini kami macam okay saya dulu alright ah uh, ya yeah. if you look at it sodium I have a pen and I have everything and I'm still pointing with my idiot fingers. I have solid and gas, sodium, betul? Dua-dua kat sini kalau kamu tanya, which one is less stable? Siapa yang paling tak stabil? Oh, your gas atom. Gas is already moving fast. High uh, kinetic energy, betul? Sebab tu mak kamu masuk kat masa kat dapur, kamu duduk kat luar pun kamu uh, bau sebab tu kamu balik rumah dah makan. Okay? Sebab apa? Because it's gas. It's moving fast because of her high energy. So if you're comparing your solid and gas over that, which one is more stable, your solid? Untuk entropy of atomization, looking at your definition, the energy required to form one more gaseous atom from the element. Semua orang kat sini adalah element. Semua orang kat sini adalah yang paling stabil tadi. Okay? And look at what we have. I want one mole. And look at the hmm. sentence. One mole jatuh pada siapa? Yes. One mole jatuh pada product, sayang. One mole jatuh pada product. Okay. It can be as simple as like this. Just like this, your magnesium solid jadi magnesium gas. Like your sodium solid jadi sodium gas. Okay. And look at the sentence. Energy required or energy release. And it's a logic. Kenapa required? Solid dengan gas. Siapa gerak lagi laju? Alright. So kalau gas nak bergerak lagi laju, nak dapat tenaga dari mana? Absorb. That's why delta H and atomization forever endothermic. Forever energy required. Sebab saya nak hasilkan gas sayang. Saya nak hasilkan gas yang bergerak laju. So saya kena tenaga lah. Right? And it's as simple as also oxygen gas like this. Saya nak jadi sebiji. Bahasa kimia. Alright, bahasa kimia sebelum I move on. That is oxygen. Oxygen gas. Kenapa oxygen pun saya salah. You know what happened today? I left my coffee. That is what happened. When, you, when you're not caffeine boosted. Uh, what I'm talking about, oxygen gas, God's sake, Miss Wong, wake up. <laughs> and that is oxygen atom. Nampak beza? Nampak beza? Ayat dalam soalan nanti. Whenever it's a gas, it's always a dye molecule. So whenever it's a gas, it's always O2 gas. Dua-dua gas tau. Alright, dua-dua gas tau. Alright, dua-dua adalah gas kat sini. So, bila dua-dua adalah gas, bila dalam ayat apa beza? Satu adalah oksigen gas molecule, satu adalah oksigen gas atom. Alright. Satu adalah oksigen gas molecule, dua biji. Satu adalah oksigen gas atom, satu biji. Okay, forever satu biji. Nampak? Okay. So, atomization adalah atom daripada element. Element forever lebih uh, stabil. Therefore, energy is always required. Okay? Ada standard tak? Your standard condition is 298 Kelvin 1 atm. 298 Kelvin 1 atm is our condition right now. 25 degrees Celsius 1 atm. Pernah wujud tak? Uh, sodium gas. Oksigen gas yang kamu breathe in. Oksigen yang sebiji ke oksigen yang dua biji? Betul. Oksigen gas sebiji. Hmm, hampa hyper lah lepas ni. Uh, tak eh, kita takkan dapat. Alright, dia takkan jadi kat standard. Never. It needs a high, it needs a super high temperature to be honest. The energy that we say energy absorbed tu, uh, best sikit-sikit punya energy absorbed lah. Kalau nak pecahkan dia jadi gas molecule, uh, gas atom. Okay. Over that, we have hydration. Apa yang kita buat kat hydration? Apa yang kita buat kat hydration? Kita tambah air. Alright, kita larutkan dalam air. Dan kok, what is the changes in the physical phase? Yes, jadi, and first. Read the sentence very carefully. 
the question stated, not the question, the definition stated, one mole of gases ion. Betul? So, dia mesti adalah gases ion. Gases ion. Satu mol jatuh kat dia, jadi aqueous. Betul? Therefore, betul tak kalau Miss Wong tulis like this? Why not? Dia tak ada ion. Ingat tak saya cakap tadi semua positif negatif adalah aqueous. Bila kamu larut dalam air, dia hanya boleh larut dalam air sebab benda tu berpecah. Garam kamu NaCl. Dia hanya boleh masuk dan dalam air dan hilang jadi larutan air garam. Sebab NaCl that is bonded is now break into Na plus and Cl minus. Baru dia boleh immerse in the water, larut dalam air. That's why semua acid base dan semua cation and ion adalah aqueous. Okay? Same thing. Bila kamu cerita pasal aqueous, benda tu kena datang daripada gases ion. Alright? So, yang ni yang kamu selalu akan buat lah. Kamu lupa, kamu ingat gases. Oh, dia gas jadi aqueous. Yang tu yang kamu ingat kan? Selalu kan? Gas jadi aqueous. Ah, jangan lah. Gas ion jadi aqueous ion. Make sense? Yang kamu kena ingat satu way. Aqueous sentiasa kena positif atau negatif. Gas Aqueous sentiasa kena jadi dalam bentuk ion. Yang tu kamu kena ingat. Okay? And it's always a heat release. It's always, always a heat release. Kamu rasa lah weh. Gas. Gas ada dalam macam ni tau. Ni gas. Alright? Gas yang duduk kat udara dengan Aqueous yang duduk dalam air. Yang mana lagi stabil? Air lah. Kalau udara kamu penuh dengan gas ion, you will forever feel electrostatic. Forever. 24 hours 7, you will feel electrostatic of the gas ion. Betul? So memang tak lah. Sebab tu dia adalah and heat release. Okay? A bit of tips. We have gone through atomization and hydration. Kalau dia nak adalah heat release, I don't know whether you realize or not, if it's a heat release, your product is more stable. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sebab tu saya letak dia next to each other. Kalau dia adalah heat release, product adalah more stable. Tengok balik atomization tadi. Heat absorb betul? Dan tadi saya tanya, sayang, dia start dengan element. So your reactant element is always more stable. Kalau dia adalah energy required, kalau delta H dia adalah positif. Whenever delta H dia positif, dalam otak kamu kena simpan dah sekarang benda ni. Whenever it's a delta H positif, 99.9% your reactant is more stable. When it's a delta H negative, when you release energy, means your product is more stable. Is that clear? Boleh nampak yang ni? Okay, ingat ya. Eh? Uh, theoretically, soalan boleh tanya. Okay, next. Simple. Tapi kalau benda tu susah nak jadi macam Kalau nak so belajar kimia tu kena 
forever adalah positif lah. You always need energy. Alright. So it depends on apa yang kita nak larutkan. Kalau benda tu easy to dissolve. Alright. Very easy, not easy. Easy to dissolve. Very easy to dissolve. Extremely easy to dissolve. It might be delta H negative or it will be a delta H low positive. Okay. But if very, very hard to dissolve. Okay. Bila dia susah gila nak larut, then the delta H will be an extremely high positive. You need a lot of energy to basically force it to happen. Okay. And next question. One more. Duduk kan? One more. Duduk di? Solute. Solute reactant or product in this case? One more duduk kat dia. So saya bagi contoh yang bukan one to one ratio. Contoh kalau misuang ada sekarang adalah magnesium chloride. Solid. When I dissolve it, what do I form? Mg. Mg je. Two plus. Mg two plus je. Aqueous. Lagi. Cl minus. That's it. Siapa kena one more? Solute MgCl2, betul? So? Letak dua kan? Nampak? Dia tak semestinya one to one. Tapi yang penting, the solute ataupun garam kamu biasanya mesti kena adalah one. Dan perasan nak kita cerita pasal solution. Alright? Bila kita kata benda tu larut atau tak larut, kita mesti cerita pasal solid. Betul? So yang kat depan tak payah fikir sayang. Kat depan mesti solid. Baru kita boleh cerita pasal solution. Baru kita boleh cerita pasal benda tu larut atau tak larut. Okay? Make sense? Simple? Sayang, benda ni tak boleh buat, you are gone for this chapter. Okay? You must be able to write this. Next. Oh, habis dah? Eh? Ada IE kan? Hiya. Ay. Kenapa? Saya tak. Hmm. IE dengan electron affinity. Betul? Ya. Yang tu kamu akan banyak guna dalam bond haber nanti. Okay. So, ionization energy. Soalan saya. Uh, we make it fast. Delta E. Uh, sorry. IE. Forever positive or negative? Forever positive. Sebab apa? Forever positive sebab energy forever adalah required. Okay. And then next question. One more jatuh pada siapa? One more electron is removed. One more of gases atom to form one mole of gases ion. Okay, kat sini kita nak tengok. I have one mole electron remove one from one mole of gases atom to form one mole of gases ion. Contoh, Na sekarang mesti gas. Akan jadi Na positive gas. Baru tambah elektron. Nampak tak one more, one more? One more, one more saya tak risau. One more, one more ha, akan nampak sekarang. Nampak tak fasa dia? Ionization energy tak boleh bermula dengan solid atau aqueous or whatsoever. Semua kena jadi gas. But we know that sodium, sodium original element wujud dalam bentuk solid. So macam mana sodium solid boleh jadi sodium gas? Yang kita belajar tadi yang mana? Atomization. My sodium solid nak jadi sodium gas. That is my delta A atomization. Betul? Nampak? 
sebab tu kita belajar automation sebab tu kita belajar benda lain sebab dia adalah proses yang diperlukan untuk sampai kat benda yang kita nak. Alright and quick question automation tadi positif atau negatif? Positif kita nak hasilkan gas so dia forever need energy betul? And IE kat sini pun sama IE forever positif. Sayang kamu nak buang elektron weight. Elektron yang duduk dalam gas atom kamu yang duduk dalam petala kamu yang ada daya tarikan. Betul? Tiba-tiba aku duduk dalam tu elok-elok ada force of attraction Han nak buang aku. Memang forever positif lah. Alright. You always need energy. Han dah dating macam Azim lah. Dia dah dating dengan girlfriend Han. Lepas tu Miss Wong so break up. I need I need some effort to break it, break them up. Azim ada girlfriend ke? Nasib baik. I I am not I'm not keen to break up to break anyone up. Ada yang ada boyfriend girlfriend? <laughs> oh, it's fine. Don't worry. It's normal. We are human. We love we love things. We we have love. It's fine. Just just but just but just you need to know what you can do and what you cannot do. All right? It's okay to love. It's fine. But your parents need your love too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. Tak boleh tulis tak jadi apa-apa. <laughs> when is the last time you say I love you to your mom? Especially the boys. Have you ever said I love you to them? What makes these three things different? Okay. But in every single one, we are still removing one electron. So it's actually a process where your aluminium removes three electrons. But when your aluminium removes three electrons in fact in chemistry, it doesn't happen in one go. Alright, it doesn't happen in, oh, I want to remove three electrons and I remove three electrons straight away. No. Because removing one electron is already hard. We have nucleus, electron is sitting around the nucleus. Remember that? Alright, your four atomic water. Ingat kasi bo? Next time your son, mama go, ben mama ajin. At least your son knows somebody called Bo and get A for the four atomic model. Okay? So I have my nucleus, which is a positive charge. I have my electron around it, which is negative charge. Positive and negative, I have something called nuclear attraction. Remember? The force of attraction will then pull the nucleus, uh, will pull the electron to the nucleus. And imagine you want to remove the electron from the attraction. Dia dah tertarik, ada daya tak, ada daya tarikan dan kamu nak buang. Tiba-tiba hang kau cakap, oh aku nak buang tiga. It doesn't happen in three in one go. It happen one by one. Okay? And the next question that I want to ask is, when I remove one by one, do I always need more energy to remove the next? Or do I need less energy to remove the next? Oh. Alright, we always need more energy to remove the next because kalau kamu ada seratus ringgit, kamu dah kena curi dengan uh, Miswan tak curi tapi Miswan cakap kan? Miswan dah ambil. Curi tu aku pun tak ambil. Alright? <laughs> you know the beauty of the language is you can always play around. So, kamu pun buat. Oh, you have 100 bucks. Alright? You have 100 bucks and Miswan take. Miswan take 10 bucks. Right? So when we swap, take the 10 bucks and you left with 90. Do you take care of the 90 even more or you just ignore it again? <laughs> take care more. Same thing, I have 30 protons in the nucleus. Initially, I had 13 electrons. Tiba-tiba okay? okay. electrons are going to be able to go. I have 12 electrons. 13 tadi 13 tadi dah kuat dah. Sekarang 13 tadi 12. Tarik lagi kuat tak? That's why you have your ionization energy will keep on increase. That is your first IE, that is your second IE, and that is your third ionization energy. The first electron, the second electron, the third electron. And ladies and gentlemen, your third IE will be forever higher than the second IE, 
and your second IE will be forever higher than your first IE. Clear? Boleh? Logic ya? Eh? Alright. Next. Electron. Apa benda? Affinity. Electron affinity kan? Alright. Beza dengan ionization energy. Apa maksud electron affinity? Again, electron, betul? And look at the E A. Look at the E A beside. E beside A beside electron activation energy. E beside A beside electron affinity. Alright. So your electron affinity over that. Uh, what happened to the value in your in your book? Positive or negative? Dua dua. Dia adalah change, betul? Yang pertama negatif ke yang pertama positif? Yang pertama negatif, betul? So saya bagi contoh, uh, kita bagi contoh oksigen. Oksigen gas, kita tambah satu elektron, saya jadi O minus gas, betul? So yang ni kita panggil first electron affinity. Lepas tu saya ada oksigen minus, saya tambah elektron kedua. Saya masih tambah satu tapi yang kedua. So saya dapat O2 minus. Yang ni adalah second. Dan kawan kamu dengan kuat tadi cakap Yang ni pos negatif Yang ni positif Setuju? Why? Soalan saya, why? Untuk EA dia forever heat change Untuk electron affinity dia forever heat change Kalau kamu perasan dia forever positif dengan negatif dua dua wujud Tapi, senang dia wujud Yang first, forever negatif Second, third, fourth, fifth, bahkan ada berapa pun forever positive. Dia hanya yang first dia negatif. Why? Negatif. Uh, sorry, electron. What charge? Negatif. Remember in an ion, why the an ion size is bigger than an ion? Ada dua perkataan, start with F and start with R. Mutual repulsion. Electron, electron repulsion. Bahasa senang yang apa ni, yang lagi kita pun memang terputuk. Sorry. Uh, easier way. Easier way to understand electron, electron repulsion. Okay. Saya ada oksigen. Oksigen memang ada tempat kosong. Dia memang tak akan lagi kan. Kenapa kita terima elektron? Sebab kita nak cakap okay. Right? So, dia memang ada balance elektron dan nak. Elektron pertama paling luar, you only have six balance elektron. That's why oksigen always become O2 minus because you have two empty state. Right? Okay, saya memang ada tempat kosong. So, elektron pertama nak masuk. Okay, masuk. Elek, uh, tenaga dibebaskan. So, senang nak masuk lah. Tak perlu tenaga, kita tak perlu paksa elektron tu untuk masuk. Sebab apa? Tempat kosong memang ada. So, I will count the first electron. I will masukkan the first electron dengan tertenam lah. So, electron dibebaskan. And when the first electron you went in already, you have the O minus. Suddenly, you have extra electron. I have empty space for you. You can come in. But, you are still holding the same charge like I do. Saya ada electron dalam tu yang memang charge negative. Electron yang bawa masuk pun charge negative. Betul? Negative, negative. Jadi apa? Kamu ada daya tolakan. So, elektron pertama dah masuk, dah ada daya tolakan. Daya tolakan baru wujud. Bayangkan elektron kedua nak masuk, yang still bercas negatif. Kita kena paksa sikit lah. Tak, dia still boleh masuk, dia akan masuk. Alright, cuma kita kena paksa dia masuk. Tempat tu ada, sebab tu dia still boleh masuk. Alright, cuma kita kena push the uh, elektron to go in. Why? Because in that, that is repulsion. So, elektron yang negatif kat sini nak masuk, kita kena tolak untuk dia go against the repulsion dan duduk dalam tempat tu. Okay. And that's why in your electron affinity or in your gaining of electron, bila kita nak terima electron, the first gain electron mesti adalah negatif. It's always easy. Alright? Okay, kawan lah. Maksud kau lah. Okay, dia ingatkan kawan dia. Okay. Rumit, rumit, rumit. Perempuan dah sesuai dia yang kita tahu lah. Alright, ingatkan seorang dia main teman main game. Lepas tu tiba-tiba dia ajar kawan. Ha, dia tak dah. Betul tak? Ha, macam tu lah. So, elektron pertama masuk tu. Ha, boleh terterap. Elektron kedua masuk. Ha, macam ni kok ajak tu. Ya, ulang. Ha, macam tu lah. Ha, okay, betul ajar main game. Right, boys? Okay.
Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. So the first one, sebab tu bila EA, dia senang dia nak tahu. The first is always negative, the second, third, fourth, fifth, semua mesti positif. So jangan risau sangat dengan the heat change. Okay, jangan risau sangat dengan energy change. Ayat, macam biasa baca sendiri, malah nak cakap. Oh, okay. Kalorimeter 2.2 dengan 2.3, kalau dia dapat tahu, ada susu yang jangan masuk. So, dia pun jangan kena ajar, dia orang nak ajar, saya nak ajar pun calculation dia. Dia kena buat soalan dulu. Dan memang tu tu akan buat lah soalan tu. So saya nak go through benda yang penting sahaja. Dalam calorimeter, uh, just very quickly to go through what is calorimeter, girl. You okay lah? Why very sleepy? I'm not very much. Why you miss home already? You okay? I don't have sleep. What can I do? I can slap you. Don't need anything I can do right now. <laughs> what is calorimeter? compared to your friend because you have no notes you have nothing you just listen you're like watching netflix but without popcorn that's why you fall, fall asleep where's your notes good enough to have the notes 
Sorry? You only download it and then keep it in your phone as a picture. That's why you're very sleepy. Where we are? Q. Q is actually the heat. All right? So delta heat, delta T is the temperature initial, temperature final, minus. Okay? Uh, tak nak guna temperature initial minus final. Dia tak semesti naik, dia boleh turun. Betul? Uh, delta T is the changes of temperature. Temperature tinggi, tolak, rendah. Sebab delta T kita kat sini, kalau boleh kita tak letak negatif kot. Kalau boleh kita tak letak negatif. Alright? Kita nak delta T tu. Yang tinggi tolak yang rendah. Okay? That is your delta T. And looking at the formula that I have, the unit down there, rasa-rasa delta T ni Kelvin or degree Celsius. Matematik ampun memang ke laut. 298 Kelvin which is 25 degrees Celsius minus 273 Kelvin, which is zero degrees Celsius. Tolak yang ni dapat berapa? Kelvin or degrees Celsius? Bonus dua-dua boleh. Sebab sama. Okay. And yang kita nak tengok, what makes it different over here, guys? What makes this formula different? Ada M. Ada C kecil, C besar. Ha, here is the place that we try your kindergarten skill. Alright, can you write C besar, C kecil? Okay, let's see. Okay. M is actually the mass. Alright. So, Nampak tak beza dua formula? Of course, si besar, si kecil lah. Yang tu paling ketara. Nampak tak beza dia adalah mass? Ada orang ada mass, ada orang tak ada mass. Dan tengok unit bawah. Orang yang ada mass, pegang gram minus one. Orang yang tak ada mass, hanya pegang joule per degree Celsius. See that? So next million dollar question. Yang ni tak boleh sama. Mass must be in what unit? Kenapa saya tanya? Sebab 99 out of the 100 question, kita akan bagi mass dalam kilogram. Tukar. Alright? Tukar. Kalau dia bagi dalam gram, ya laki lah. Kalau tak, tukar. Dia mesti dalam gram. Okay? So, when you read the question, the most important thing is to know the one that given... Kenapa kecilnya? I'm sorry. Kalau kamu baca soalan, the most important thing is looking at your C besar dengan C kecil. Dalam exam, soalan kadang-kadang takkan cakap specific heat capacity atau heat capacity. Kalau dia cakap, you are lucky. Use the word. C kecil adalah specific. C kecil adalah specific. C besar adalah heat capacity. Nampak? Okay. Kalau dia tak cakap, dia hanya bagi tahu value. Apa yang kita nak tengok? Untuk bezakan diorang. Unit. Tengok unit. Sebab tu unit dia besar. Sebab unit dia mesti bagi. Betul? Dia bila bagi value, dia mesti bagi unit kat belakang. Unit dia mesti bagi. Dan cara nak hafal, tengok unit. Yang ada gram, depan kena ada mass. Nampak? Yang tak ada gram, depan kena ada mass. Ada gram, baru ada gra gang. Ada mass, ada gram, baru kena ada gang gram dia. Kena ada mass. Kalau tak ada gram kat belakang, unit dia tak ada gram. Kena ada gang tak? Tak ada member tu dah hilang dah dari awal. Nampak? Betul? Saya, kadang-kadang saya ajar tak adalah cara proper nak hampa baca ayat semua buat di specific hit tapi tak payahlah. Yang penting kira betul, kamu tahu value tu apa. So cara yang paling senang bukan hampa ayat, bukan tengok apa, tengok unit. Ada gram negative one, depan kena ada MC delta T. Kat belakang tak ada gram, means C delta T. Nampak? Okay? Beres? Senang eh? Sangat senang. Dua je formula dalam ni, tak ada apa. Hassel's law pun sangat senang. You know what is Hassel's law? Nak balik kampung ni rupak betul? Dari KTP nak balik ke home. Naik bus, naik flight, naik train, tetap balik sampai kat home. Betul? That is what is meant by Hassel's law. It doesn't matter what half you are taking. Alright? It doesn't matter what half that you are taking. But 
the changes of energy the delta h akan sama alright maksud saya kalau saya ambil contoh terus tengok eh saya nak delta h ini yang saya nak adalah yang warna kuning saya go straight saja yang ni yang kita nak okey tapi selain daripada jalan straight, we never have that jalan straight. Kenapa? Sebab ingat tak tadi saya kena jadi atomization. Solid kena jadi gas. Dia atomization, right? So atomization berlaku dulu. Dah ada atomization. Sama juga kat sini. Dah ada combustion. Gas burn in oxygen jadi uh, carbon dioxide and water. So dia jadi combustion. Betul? Dia guna jalan lain. Dia buat benda lain untuk sampai kat dia. Tapi first thing in Hess's law. Do you realize the destination is the same? Syarat dalam Hess's Law satu. The destination must be the same. The product must be the same. Satu je boleh ubah jalan. Okay. And how do I know delta H1 sama dengan apa? Belajar vector tak? And tak suka. Nampak arrow tu? Arrow yang kita nak. Fokus pada arrow yang kita nak. Dan kita bergerak kepada arrow yang kita ada. Semua arrow lain kena bertentangan dengan dia. Maksud bertentangan, I hope you realize that is a loop. Do you realize that this is actually a cycle? Alright. Dan yang kita nak adalah yang warna biru, arrow menghala ke sini. Okay. And then, this one arrow ke bawah. This one arrow ke bawah. Like this lah. Alright. This one arrow ke atas. Nampak tak arrow yang kita ada dengan arrow yang kita nak bertentangan arah. Bermakna dia akan berlanggar. Bertentangan arah tu bermakna dia kena bertembung arrow tu. Realize that? That is what we call vector. That's why in here mathematic wise your delta H1 akan sama dengan semua yang bertentangan arah dengan dia hasil tambah. Nampak tak dia langgar. Okay, so your delta H1 akan sama dengan negatif 2, 3, 4, 0. This one. Tambah dengan this one. Negatif 8, 7, 0. Tambah dengan positif 3, 2, 7, 0. Vector. Alright, kat sini satu saya ajar. Produk kena sama. So destination produk saya sama. Kedua, macam mana nak dapat vector? Jangan rasa pening weh. Tengok arrow je. Arrow... Jangan fokus pada arrow lain. Fokus pada arrow yang kita nak. Yang tu yang penting. Aku nak jawapan tu. So cari arrow yang kita nak yang mana. Ni arrow yang saya nak. Ni arrow yang kita nak. So arrow yang kita nak duduk kat sini. So semua orang kena langgar dia nanti. Semua orang semua kepala kena langgar dia. Nampak tak? Kepala dia langgar. Kepala dia akan pusing langgar. Kepala dia akan pusing langgar. Kalau semua kepala dia pusing dan langgar dan kita tambah je value dia. Itulah jawapannya. Nampak? So the most important thing is which arrow is the arrow that we want. Alright? And then the rest kamu pusing lah sehingga kamu langgar dia. Okay? Makes sense? And that is has a slot. Okay? Boleh buat latihan. Kalau ada soalan boleh datang tanya. And your attendance and we will start off your semester when you come back from Chinese New Year with electrochemistry. And I'm expecting notes. Oi, I'm expecting notes. <laughs>